Okay, hello folks at home. Um, today we're going to do a freebooters. This is kind of an ad hoc freebooters because of reasons. Um, but the first thing we're going to talk about today is Mozilla, beloved company by all and beyond any kind of criticism, have decided <laughs> to terminate their Mastodon instance. And I think this is a little bit worthy for discussion because, well... I don't know if I, I so I, I follow and am followed by a fair number of people on the Fediverse and I I can probably count on one hand how many times someone with the Mozilla instance has even appeared on my timeline, let alone spoken to me. And I don't entirely know what Mozilla were trying to do with their by having it. Yeah. Like is is it it just seems like it was something one employee just fired up and then forgot about. Like it, it, I mean, before, before we get into it, I love that you introduced this as this is an ad hoc preboot, as you know, as opposed to all of the other <laughs> Fully very sorry, ones. Yeah. Thoroughly <laughs> planned out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Unscripted so when when the news when the news um uh ha ha what's what what's the verb broke when the news broke I, I checked out the um Mozilla dot social and it's only got two hundred and seventy seven users. It's not like See, <laughs> I assumed that mozilla social was for mozilla employees yeah that's what i assumed but it seems not it seems it was open registrations right it's seems Nod. so i mean if it's um, if it's them just out of the kindness of their hearts you know running a feddy server for people that's that's great but then why should it like it can't like it can't cost much for mozilla it can't cost much but it probably distracts from things right well, it'd be one person just updating it now and then, and you know, points and more. I, I can't. I, I don't, it, so what? What the consensus? Because they didn't give a reason, right, for why they're shutting it down. Um, okay. Well, I've the got consensus... the... go on. Yeah. Okay. So I've got the I've got the press release here. It says we've made the hard decision to end our experiment with Mozilla dot social and we'll shut down the Mastodon instance on December seventeenth, twenty twenty four. You can continue to use Mozilla dot social until December seventeenth. Before that date, you can download your data here, and migrate your account to another instances another instance following the instructions below. What will happen on December seventeenth? The Mozilla uh, Mozilla.social Mastodon instance will be shut down and all content and accounts will no longer be accessible. Your Mozilla account will remain active uh, for access to other Mozilla products and services. So your Mozilla account will remain active for access to other Mozilla products. So so I could log in with my Firefox Sync account? I don't think so, no. That cannot Doesn't possibly sound. be true. No, but, it, but they make it sound like... Sound yeah. Like, yeah. That, 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 the... The, the your Mozilla dot social Mastodon account cannot possibly be shared with anything else, can it? I mean, when I say possibly, possibly it could, it could, of course, they could have done it that way, but I don't think they did. I don't think there's anything that's linked to it. But yeah, no. Um, going back, to, they didn't give a reason. There's no reason in that. Also, first of all, no. why why does everything have to be a fucking experiment? There's no experiment there. There's, like, what are you what are you looking the, to the, find out? What new information? It's not an experiment. I suppose the experiment is to see if people use it, but then like. Just firing it up and That's leaving it is is yeah. not is not like I mean yeah, I, think they didn't... I, I think I barely knew it existed. I, I remember when they were shutting down, I was like, Oh yeah, I remember hearing something about them. Yeah. But like, it's like it's not... I, I I didn't even know if their instance was for like employees. It could have been an experiment, like or just like it's it's a presence on there that they're self hosting. Mm. That seemed, I mean that seemed like a that for for a you know, again, let's put aside We'll, we'll do the criticisms of Mozilla as a, cor as a corporation and a foundation later, right? Put, putting that aside, let's pretend they're just an open, you know, a free, a free software open source company. Like a bit, a big free software project having a having a presence on there and just being like, you know, not like our devs have to have a Mozilla dot social account, but you know, it's it's for our devs and it's for you know promoting Firefox. And if anybody is a fan of Mozilla, they can join the instance. That's you know, that's cool. Um, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, they, they you know, for shutting it down, and, and the community consensus and the replies and stuff seems to be it was because Feddy was so critical of the AI stuff. Oh, I which mean, is isn't not everyone you know, that's not confirmed in any way, but it seems plausible that they were just like, "Well, fuck this place. If everybody on this place hates us and hates what we're doing and hates AI, then we'll just get out of here." See, that actually kind of, in some ways, is a bit more. It makes it makes a bit of sense. Like, if it's only got a couple of hundred users. Um, maybe it's like closed registrations or something. I, I, I don't even know. Um, 
but like with um i you know like it, it, it could easily have been like why haven't they why are they not using that mozilla.social as their own presence on the internet right if they're like if they have anything to do with like the free and social web as they say surely they should mm. maybe not necessarily host an instance but at least have a presence on their own self-hosted one but um well, or, or, or in, in, integrate it i don't know if this would make sense but integrate it into the browser somehow like they 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 seem to like doing these sidebar things now that's where they're sticking yeah. the AI, ai stuff is i understand it like you know have a little um i know there's a very minimal um uh mastodon client that you can use uh i forget what it's mm -hmm. called now i was looking at it the other day but there's, yeah there's, so it's another website you go to and you sign in with your mastodon account and then it's a different interface for, you know it's a different client for mastodon um, and it's very minimal. And somebody was saying that would fit nicely in a sidebar. So you know, in integrate, integrate Mastodon into that. I, I mean, I wouldn't want that, but that you know, that would be a, a more interesting direction for them to go in, as far as I'm concerned. You know, than than like AI or Pocket or all all the stupid shit they do. It's 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 hard to watch, and 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 you're seeing them just hurt themselves. It's the meme of the yeah. stick in the the stick in the spokes of their. I mean, bike. I see I see the logic because because they're. At least as they're presenting it, like their AI is more like, um, because they they they're on the side that says like AI can AI might be a good thing, a useful tool, but it should be self-hosted. Like people should have their own model running. It shouldn't be remote. It shouldn't be in the cloud. So their plan was to have you have a local language model running, mm -hmm. um, and that provides all your AI answers. You're not going to the cloud for it, and that is a healthier version of AI. Like that. Mm -hmm. Kind of Mozilla being good, but I think it's they're always just it's the same with um, Canonical when they do stuff with Ubuntu. They just seem to be like six months behind the curve. Yeah, that's the irritating thing. Now we're at the point where everybody's pretty much you know decided that like this kind of AI, you know, the the, the language model chatbot type AI stuff is is mm. is not a good thing, you know for mm. multiple reasons. Uh, you know the the cannibalization of people's creativity is one thing. The reduction of everything to you know content the slop. Mm. Uh, nothing, and and of course the power use, which is huge. Mm. Yeah, yeah, because of course Microsoft are now um, uh, firing up a new nuclear power station to power the the AI stuff. Just fucking that's dystopia uh, yeah. shit for something I mean, I mean, we don't need. And there's all yeah. you know, arguable benefit at best. It's that that's that's why the the AI bubble is kind of bursting because mm. a lot of the the companies that put the money into it have not seen any kind of like widespread benefit because no. the thing is it's you you can't trust anything that comes out of ai and i don't no. know if you ever will you know like it can it can give you something and then you can check it but mm. i don't i don't think you could you could ever like I don't know. I'd be I'd be interested to say maybe well not in real life like hypothetically read a book written by ai and see where the worst bit is in a whole book like where it trips over itself yeah, the most. Yeah. I wonder if there'd be plot holes. There probably would. Do you think there'd be plot holes? Probably. Yeah, I think there'd be plot holes. The thing is, I mean, this is the very sort of like, it's, it's not literally the first generation. It's gone through some iterations. Mm. But we are, you know, this is the, what's the word? Like, this is the, the, the forefront. Like, this is a new mm. thing. Yeah. This kind of AI, yeah. really. Um, and, and we can train it to be better. You could probably, you know, given, you know, five years, you could probably train a language model to write a novel that wouldn't have plot holes that wouldn't have those kind of telltale signs of being ai but even then i mean we, we, we kind of talked about this before but the, uh, the, even then what is the benefit it, 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 this is you know this is a, tr a, a trope a commonly repeated thing on Feddy in particular but like we like the point of automation should be automate the mundane things that, that are boring for people to do not automate the you know our creative things that we that we enjoy yeah but also one of the things about jobs it, it, and hiring people for a lot of jobs that require people to do them that requirement is uh either like is a responsibility and a computer can't ever be responsible right so uh so there is only like lim a limited amount of use it will ever get out of it because someone will still need to take responsibility for it fundamentally operated mm. as it were i think i think there could be some great uses for for ai theoretically like it would be interesting to see how maybe an independent film studio might be able to use ai to get like hollywood style special effects and see see mm. what that throws yeah out. yeah yeah you know, all, and also i mean i know i know people are very oh. Like illustrators in particular are, are worried that you know it's going to take away their work. You know, if people can just use a 
an AI to generate images. But but you know, it's, at the same time, yeah. Again, um, somebody writing their own. Um, I don't know. They're doing some kind of project where they need, you know, making an RPG or something, and they they can't, they could not possibly afford to hire an illustrator. But you can get something almost as good from an AI, so it lowers the um, it lowers the bar of entry to creative endeavors, and I think that's a good thing. Um, the, the the fact that that um, illustrators are potentially, I don't, first of all, I don't think illustrators are going to be well, maybe. It, I think it's going to be more at the bottom end, where people who mm. couldn't have afforded illustrators anyway are just going to use this stuff. I don't think it's going to be people who can afford illustration are still going to want quality illustration for the most part. I would think I might be wrong, but e- e- even then, even if it takes the work, you know, off off of um, illustrators, that's that's a problem with that's the problem with how we pay people for work. That's mm. not a problem with AI as such. Like if this yeah. stuff does have uses, then we shouldn't sort of blanket uh, rule it out, but. What we've got at the moment, from what I can tell, it's only the only thing it's good at, and even then you have to check it, uh, like you say, is summarizing. I think it's quite yeah. good at summarizing. But then mm. e- 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 even that use, that's, that's a use that sort of plays into a very capitalist notion of us as like productive mm. unit. You know, it's yeah. not, you know, I, I don't like if, I, if I'm thinking like, oh, I'd love to read that novel, but I don't really have the time. I don't want a summary of the novel. I want the time yeah. to read the novel. Yeah. Well, uh, this is oh, this is this is interesting. This actually adds a few layers into it, right? Because when I when we're doing our our expanse podcast, I watched the episode twice. The first time I watched it, enjoyed it, soaked it up as your sort <laughs> yeah. of intended, as it were. And then the mm. second time I watched it on one point five speed with subtitles on, checking to see if I follow through to see to yeah. see what I understand, see what I don't, and um. I would never in- watch something I enjoy, particularly for a first time. If I want to enjoy something, I'll I'll play it at the speed that it's intended. So, like, mm. e- even if it's a TV show or something like that, there have on occasions, occasionally podcasts I will put on 1.5, mm. very rarely too, because in a conversational tone like, like this, people speak a lot slower than they would do on scripted television. So... Yeah. It, it after 1.5 and i'll be interested to know if anyone else does this and if you find you know listening at home find these podcasts too long try 1.5 and, uh, um <laughs> because i after a while with the 1.5 it sounds normal your uh, ears sort of oh, adjust yeah. to it yeah, uh, yeah. One po- uh, 2.0 uh two times speed i think is a bit fast at least for me for it to not always be like noticeable mm-hmm. uh but if i need to watch something that i don't particularly enjoy or whatever and I can follow it at 1.5. In fact, one thing I have noticed, that, thanks to my stupid short attention span, is that watching things at 1.5 often keeps me hooked in a bit more effectively. Oh, yeah. No, I can see that being the case. Yeah. I, on the contrary, I never put things on anything but one speed. Um, and it comes from something we've talked about before. I, to me, it's, it's why I don't mod games. It's the same reason. I... And I, I know this is bullshit. I know this doesn't make any actual sense, but I want the authored experience. <laughs> and watching that does make it, sense. no, yeah, yeah, like it's not it rational. Like, it's not not. Um, uh, but I've got a friend, uh, you, you know, uh, uh, Danny, and we listen to audiobooks together sometimes. And she's mm-hmm. she's like, if she had to listen to things on one speed, she would just get bored and and wander off. So she she always listens to things on like yeah, about one point five, sometimes two speed. Um, she's trying to get through as many books as possible as quickly as possible you know and also not get bored while listening to them uh so when we're listening together it's on 1.5 speed and i'm like i'm fine with it mm. uh like there's a little period of adjustment but then yeah it sounds normal and some some of the books honestly they're read so slowly that two speed actually sounds oh, they like, are aren't they yeah, yeah. um yeah. so I, I don't have anything like sort of like morally against it but for myself i'm like mm. It's disrespectful to the to the author, <laughs> even when I'm just listening to some like like what you know what weird like some ad hoc mm-hmm. fucking off the off the whatever off the cuff podcast. I'm still no, I know I've got to respect. I've got to respect the artist's integrity. <laughs> yeah, you know. I don't know. Yeah, but like this is this. I mean, are we going to fall back into like low art and high art now? Like, because I think this might actually be where the difference is. Because like with podcasting, I podcasting is like it's not it's 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 non-fiction right like to me i guess non-fiction see this is where i'm going to argue against myself what i was saying last time because there isn't really a distinction between high art and low art like not not in a in really a postmodern way but um 
I think I mentioned something to you. Did I, men- did I mention this or did I, did I intend to mention this? There was, um, t- stop me if I've talked about this when we've been recording before, but um, so I like Star Trek, right? I think I did bring it up last time. I, I like Star Trek. Mm-hmm. Um, and in Star Trek, the character, because they're, they're post-capitalist, they don't need to uh, work for survival. They get all their basic needs met and, you know, they basically live a luxury life for free, what we consider a luxury life for free. Mm-hmm. Um, so their time is spent, you know, in, you know, creative endeavors and learning and stuff like that. You know, they put on plays and they paint paintings and, 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 and I, there was a post on Fetty saying like, it always used to, and I shared this, it always used to bother them that like, uh, they would do paintings, but they're always very mediocre painting. Like they were kind of like, you know, Sunday afternoon watercolorist paintings. They were, they were kind of very uh, amateurish. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'd always sort of sneered at that, like, like if you've got, you know, all the free time in the world, like, do something a bit more challenging. Like, you should be pushing the boundaries of art, not just like doing like nice landscapes or whatever, mm. and putting on Shakespeare plays in a, in a very, you know, standard way. Uh, but so, yeah, there was this post saying, um, no, the whole point is that, like, when when capitalism doesn't exist, that striving doesn't exist, that competitive like spirit doesn't exist. You what? You, the point is, they are doing these things amateurly just for their own enjoyment doesn't matter whether it's good or not you know you can be a shit painter if you enjoy it that's the fucking point uh and there's something beautiful in that and and that you know that we've talked about before that's that's the kind of youtube channel i like is just somebody doing it because they love it um yeah. and and i enjoy the amateurishness because because it it, it, it there's an honesty and a, and a an integrity to it i know i'm not being you know i think that that's yeah like it almost it feels a little bit like it follows the path of 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 some artists where they start off with very intricate detailed technically good stuff (laughs) and then they start going into like cubism and postmodernism there's the famous um i'm gonna i'm gonna mangle this the the famous picasso quote where is something like um uh at the age of at the age of 14 i could paint like an old master um it took me it took me the whole of my life life to learn how to paint like a child yeah which and there's there's something to that yeah i yeah like i mean i i fail to see in a lot of cases how like because society fetishizes competition and i often fail to see how this actually is the best way of of, Mm. of like building up society in general right like it seems that everything is competitive like you know you got not only sports um but sports hold you know take up such a big part of our culture so much money but also everything from like politics to business uh everything's a conflict everything's a battlefield everything's a competition and i i kind of feel like like there, there's got to be like another way like the best the best mm. to achieve the best things that we can as a society as, as human beings surely it's it's not in spite of each other but surely to be lifted up by each other right like that's yeah like, yeah yeah be it can't be a zero-sum game like it's exactly. got to be a case of you know like cooperative mm. um you know i bet we, we both mm. benefit kind of so i yeah. mean in human history that does you know for the big things mm. I mean, it's it's tried to say, but you know, imagine, imagine if licensing has existed when you know language was invented, and you know, like yet, like only one culture could have language, and nobody else mm, <laughs> has yeah. access to that. Way. Yeah, uh, you know um, how uh, how countries all struggle to pay for the Olympics, or the, you know, mm-hmm. like how how it becomes such an expensive mm-hmm. endeavor, and how the Olympic Committee are finding it more and more difficult to find countries willing to put up the Olympics. Like. It could be the case that everyone in the world comes together and 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 builds a standing Olympic village in Greece. And we could have that as like a, a central, you know, like monument to us to a coming yeah. together, if you know what I mean. Yeah, sometimes when the Olympics is on and, you know, there's all this fuss about, you know, this country doesn't want it because they can't afford it. And this, you know, mm-hmm. I've looked into whether it is actually econo- just economically, whether it's a net mm-hmm. cost or a net earner mm. um and it, it, nobody seems to be quite sure <laughs> like, there's contradictory it doesn't yeah nobody's quite sure because it if it is an earner it's going to be a, a lot of knock-on things right it's mm. not going to be like you, know, you make that much money as the olympics is on it yeah um, I, I see i i, the, I probably the fact that we even look at it that way is kind of sad right i don't yeah. remember i don't look at it like that in the past so you know it was it was a we we've become very sort of penny pinching and 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 yeah, this whole mentality of being a productive 
everybody's got to be productive everything's got to have an economic benefit yeah that's that's it in a nutshell everything's got to have an e- economic benefit or what's the point yeah and uh actually you bringing this back down to mastodon I, I i heard a lot of people saying that when like with mastodon like if you can't become an influencer on it if you can't be famous then mm. what's the point um and i think i think to be honest i think the fediverse actually does kind of sort of represent that part of us you know that part of that that, that that's what part of people of like the enjoyment of doing something in in the face of 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 this of these expectations and, and of i this. think Freddie, just for just straight straight up comparing Freddie to twitter or something like i think the lack of an algorithm like you very quickly on fed you realize um i don't want to follow too many people and i don't want too many people following me there's a reasonable number there's something you've talked about before there's a reasonable number of people i can talk to at the same time you know and yeah. actually have a conversation as yeah. opposed to you know. yeah yeah because I, I i follow a lot of people like four or five thousand but mm. i have a list of vips of which you are one <laughs> and okay. The, the, it's a list of people who I want to make sure that if they post a status, yeah, that I, yeah. I catch it. That they're, they're they're sort of, for, you know, usually like friends, as it were, or or people I find particularly yeah. interesting. You have an actual relationship with, with yeah. yeah. But I, yeah, I, I mean, it's a hangover from back in the days when Mastodon or when the Fediverse was was tiny, and like you just almost you'd almost follow anyone that was posting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like they follow you, follow back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, but now, now I I don't know I kind of feel like the the Fed in in many ways like there's a part of me that thinks that corporations and big organisations and stuff not really taking an interest in the Fed. I kind of feel a bit relieved actually, all things considered. Like the UN, not the UN, the EU, they decided to stop their uh, Mastodon project. Um, I'm pretty sure there have been quite a few other similar projects over time. Did the BBC? They decided to roll back their mm. uh, their Fediverse project. I think it just doesn't. I just. I think. I think. Same with Mozilla, probably. I, I think they just can't fit it into their corporate logic because it doesn't have a place there. It, yeah. Because it's explicitly designed not to. Yeah. And do, do you know which, what? Which I, I, which I think means that they're they're kind of behind the times. I think. I'm not sure. I. I I have a lot of like almost conflicting opinions on this, because it's like. <laughs> If Fediverse is like the the community center of the internet, uh, <laughs> you know, like the village hall of the internet, as it were, where it's, you know, like it's just a bunch of bumbling techies just doing their thing, and mm. uh, I, I I mean I don't want to cast the whole Fediverse as all of that. Like it's it's all a bunch of you know, it's it's alternative is like you know it's an alternative place, but like it you know may, maybe places like. Th- well, I was going to say Threads or Blue Sky or whatever might be a better place for the BBC because of the corporate matchup. Yeah, I'd rather. Uh, I'd rather. I mean, this is we. Yeah, hmm. come up a lot. I'd rather corporations not be on Fedi. I'd rather. I don't want the news services on Fedi. I, I don't want celebrities on Fedi. Hmm. I want it to be a fr- a place that is free from all of the things that are really conditioned by capitalism. Hmm. Uh, to, you know, in, in in a very straightforward and extreme way, like like the notion of a celebrity. Hmm. Do you know who's that fast? Um, so, um, what's her name? What's, Taylor Swift mm-hmm. endorsing um, Kamala, right? Mm-hmm. And that was that was somehow news for like five fucking days. Um, yeah, I, I I know this, this is almost like a teenager thing to say, but we shouldn't care what a celebrity thinks about politics. No, like, no, or, or at least we shouldn't care what a celebrity thinks about politics any more than we should care about what anybody thinks about. Politics. Um, I, I think I this is a bit of a media thing. Uh, it, 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 I don't think people. I don't think celebrity endorsements actually move the needle that much. I think it's more. I mean, I don't know even know if Taylor Swift cares or whatever. But like, I think mm. the media like having Taylor Swift in headlines, and I think that's why it's made the. I mean, the things are popular. I, I, I don't see why we should care what this billionaire. Like, she seems like a decent person, and you know, I, I, her music is not my kind of music. But you know, mm. she seems it seems to care about her music and care about what she does and you know she she has integrity i think seems to be a decent person but i don't fucking i still don't care what she thinks about politics and you know she there's stuff about you know she flies all over the place in a private jet and pollutes shit out of everything and you know like yeah i don't get why would she get why we i mean we explicitly shouldn't care what millionaires and billionaires think about politics because their interests are not aligned with our interests. no well certainly not billionaires like it, mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I, 
I, I see. I always, see. I was trying to guess right in California, all the tech bros. Where which way do they vote? Because for the longest time, I thought they lent Democrat, and. I don't know if it's changed or things are coming out of the woodwork or whatever, but it definitely seems like like the the big money people in Silic in like Silicon Valley and and that kind of place, they're they're less. They don't seem to. They're not backing Kamala as much as you'd think, or as much as I used to. Yeah, be. I think it's become more acceptable to become. Well, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, it, things are more polarized, which is becoming, you know, a cliche at this point. But it, you know, it's true. I think it's more acceptable. I, th I think, I think, tech bros. If you take, you know, take the whole, the whole of tech bros as a soup, and they probably still lean more Democrat. I think, but you know, there's nothing between the Democrats and the Republicans anyway. And you know, they certainly, you know, the ones with actual money, they certainly donate to both parties, which matters more really than which one they personally want to. Um, this is getting a bit too. <laughs> Tag off, so off. yeah no yeah i mean it's it's a money issue it's a money in politics you know like yeah. the thing is it, uh, we have this problem to a lesser degree in in, in the uk but like yeah m like politics and, and and money should be like worlds apart as far as as i'm gonna say yeah um and i think yeah. most people probably agree with that really you know but getting back to the, to the art stuff so before i was saying like art, fine art is a very distinct thing it's its own thing it's doing a very specific thing it's like research research science versus you know being like a materials engineer or something you know they're pushing the boundaries uh, now i'm gonna contradict that and say that, that that distinction is complete bullshit it's all all art is the same all creativity is the same it's just play it's just us playing and we should take all these like sort of capitalist elitist bourgeois mm -hmm. readings out of it and just um mm -hmm. yeah like celebrate like am amateur creativity absolutely yeah yeah and um yeah i i, I mean we, i think we said it possibly in one of the earlier freebooters about like the idea of comparing like uh, uh something from greg's versus a uh a cake from <laughs> village a fake. village fake which i mean i personally like the the village fake cakes I, c I can't eat them so much anymore because of vegan you know like so you okay. can, so, butter and eggs. Yeah. See that's that's kind of so so I do kind of have to like I I don't know. Like I, to be fair, there are some great vegan bakeries out there. There's uh, Alex Gooch, who uh is very expensive, but like whoa. Uh <laughs> around so it, the thing is it's a it's a small small chain of, of Welsh bakeries along I think like the south of Wales. So like the recommendation is useless to most people watching this. <laughs> but if you ever if you ever, ever get a chance, Alex Gooch, good bakery, um, but expensive, okay, go, like go, really about, expensive. About the art thing uh, again. So I watched. Um, uh, I tweeted this, but nobody cared. <laughs> but, uh, you know, those, we've all seen those videos, I'm sure, of like uh, laughing at state flags, U.S. state flags. Basically. Oh yes, yes, yes. That's what right. So they're all, you know, they've all got these, um, these very sort of, uh, again, amateurish from from the 1800s, usually 1700s, 1800s, like a blue background with like a coat of arms, not a coat of arms, but a crest or a, a medallion or a seal of some sort on, and they look, they look, they look to our modern, our trained modern bourgeois design eyes. They look kind of silly and crude and um, a bit naive. Yeah. Um, so there's these videos, yeah, then TED Talks and stuff, sort of crit criticizing state flags and saying, oh, these all look stupid and old and rubbish, and we should uh, replace them with something, you know, that, that basically adheres to, you know, m modernist bourgeois design mm. ideals. Um, and, and those videos are very popular. And I watched I watched a video the other day uh, making the contrary case. Uh, it was uh, somebody on YouTube called Premodernist. I like his videos, does good videos. And he was sort of going through the uh, making making the case that I just kind of made about like we should mm -hmm. celebrate that these were made by real people, and they had real meaning. Re you know, they they, mm -hmm. um, they have symbolism in them that has actual meaning to people, and they come from real circumstances. Yeah, and a lot of the flags, uh, the, uh, most of the ones with a blue background and then some kind of seal on them, they they go back to the Civil War. Um, yeah. And somebody summed up, summed it up in a comment um, saying like you know uh, yeah the, oh, I can't remember. What the wording was, but it was uh, it was like loser, loser, modern design flag versus you know this flag that literally killed slavers. Yeah, uh, was, yeah. But the, po the point is, they've got a history to them, and, they, and it, you know, actual people in actual circumstances design these things, and like sneering at them because they don't adhere to modernist design thingies is is mm -hmm. a lot missing the point. 
Yeah. So so I just popped up the Montana flag there. Now, apart from the word Montana, there's a lot of flags that do do kind of have that 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 navy field with a, like a, a seal, yeah. a crest, a badge, or something in the middle. Um, so I know exactly what you mean, and I I watched the video. So the Montana, really I learned this from the video though. Actually, Montana isn't actually one of those. It's just kind of mimicking because <laughs> Montana didn't actually exist, uh, or at least uh, I think it wasn't like it was partly incorporated territory. But yeah, so that that is actually a modern one that's copying the style of the other uh, northern ones. Not, what's, but nonetheless, what's, it's still... What's, what's an example of a... Uh, like Virginia what? or something. Virginia, that's the one. Also, yeah, the... the <laughs> I, do, I do agree that writing the name of the place on the flag is a bit silly. Well, see, this is where the video... I, I don't know. This might be one of those videos that might have, like... I don't know, I don't know if it changed my mind, but it certainly gave me a hell of a lot to think about. Uh, so I... It's definitely given me... Yeah, like... it. So I don't know. So I'll, I'll just put Virginia up as another example. And, I, and it kind of got me thinking. The first question I had walking away from, from that video that you sent me was... Oh, did you watch what, it? You watched yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, well, I watched it. It was yeah, oh, a really nice good video. Time. Really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, it was... And, um, and I do follow, like... I follow CGP Grey as well, so I knew the references that he was making. Mm. And I... And the first question I had walking away from that video was, what's the purpose of a flag? because like i get all the history and the stuff and and that that's kind of important right but what's the use case of a flag mm. um, well americans americans um oh this is gonna get yeah so <laughs> americans seem to like flags more than we do right they attach more importance to them they attach a lot of importance to their national flag i know a lot of americans would be d deeply offended if you you know did you know mm. fire to the american flag you know it comes up as a political issue sometimes whereas i think most Brits, certainly brits who feel that way but most brits like if there's something set, set fire to the union jack i don't give a shit um oh, i'd imagine like french and italian people probably feel, even feel more like we're just not we're not that's such mm. a i mean america has this you know recent uh revolutionary history and then the civil war and that you know that's why flags became an important military thing and they became important in their culture that that's the reason for it it's not just because they're idiots but then that infects stuff like you know, like um, uh, like queer queer movements. You know, having the, the the gay pride flag, and then we've got you know a million flags. You know, the bisexual flag, the lesbian flag. We've got all these but flags. Also, the, the history of the the rainbow flag is quite interesting too. It used to have hot pink in it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but these these flags, it's it's the choice to use a flag, like. As sort of leftists, we generally, we, you know, we're not, we don't really very much like nation states. We don't like borders. We don't like boundaries. We don't like dividing people up. And flags are, to me, I, I see flags as part of that process. Yeah. So attaching a flag to something that's supposed to be progressive, using a flag to symbolize it, is always, I'm, not, I'm not saying we shouldn't use it. I'm not shitting on them. Um, but it, the, it's a complicated thing. Yeah. I mean, for me personally, I feel like the sense... I know it's unavoidable, but the sense of national identity always makes me feel a bit odd because it's not, like, obviously, you're going to have an identity based on where you come from. That's mm -hmm. basically what your identity is, right? But, you know, like the, the whole idea of like being like proud of where you're from because you happen to be from there and, and all that. Like, as, as soon as you define it and, and contain it, it's, it's exclusive, it's exclusionary. Yeah. yeah and, you're and I yourself think, by, yeah. Like a, 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 a queer, um, campaign or something would say no well, queer, queer is included of course the concept of queerness is inclusive anybody can mm. be queer total um mm. but i think I, I do think using a flag as soon as you symbolize things in that particular way in that particular way that, that has that historical context to me that does feel exclusive and exclusionary not not the i'm not saying the queer flag is that but you know it's well the queer flag is interesting because it's well first of all not a nation um but also it's a statement um so for example like some people will say that like you know if you're like an ally or something you should be flying the pride flag to let um you know other queer people know they're safe with you for example um so that flag and even even the, even the even the ally language um i think that's part of the same um uh co coherent sort of rationalization of how this stuff mm -hmm. works like I'm, I'm not i don't consider myself an ally we and because ally the way it's used in these kind of you know id poll context implies that those are the ones with the interests in fighting and we are just you know well-meaning people who want to help out but that I, that's not how i see it we're fighting we're all fighting the same fight yeah uh, we all have the same shared interests we're not different groups with different interests working together 
we have the same shared interests, uh, which the peculiarities and details of which differ. But I'm not. I'm not an ally. I'm. A, I'm an accomplice. <laughs> you know, like, um, yeah. So, I, but again, I understand why pe- people who have been shit on they they want symbols as a way of coming together. Um, I understand that, of course. I'm not. I'm not shitting on any of this. I'm not saying people shouldn't use the pride flag or, or you know, looking down on anybody who does. Um, these these symbols are important, but the, the choice of the, the the flag format in particular, I do find a little bit unsettling. Um, and and what do you and mean by the flag com- format. Sorry. What, what what do you mean by the flag format? Well, it, it is like a national. It's a flag. Literally, a flag. It's like a national flag, a thing that represents a national state, which is an inherently exclusive and usually combative thing that you know right. conquers other states right. and has hostile relationships and mm. blah blah blah. It's it's take, and I I think that's because it it was an American thing. I think that's where it, why everything in in America has to be has to be represented by a flag. Um, I'm not I'm not I'm not putting I'm not I'm not shitting on the queer movement whatsoever. If it seems that way, I'm not at all. <laughs> there, there comes a point where yeah, you're coming together in safety is good, but then also mm. recognizing you know we have a lot in common. Mm. We've got yeah. shared interests. We're like the point is we're working together in this. Not that we're all going into our own little. But well, isn't that the isn't that the beauty of the of the rainbow flag? Because everyone's under the rainbow. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, no, yeah, I'm on board with that. Yeah, the, yeah. So it's it's yeah. a rebellious flag in that sense of. of, of oh of no, it is. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And its history, you know, it, it came from a, a proud and um, yeah, yeah, honourable history and all that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, anyway, the, the, what I was thinking is like, so the purpose of a flag. Now, there are lots of purposes of a flag. Also, um, I recognise the irony of having a Soviet flag behind me. <laughs> so the um the the so when one of the uses of a flag i'm just going to give a random example because there are millions of uses of a flag is when you're selecting your language uh for like a website or something right yeah 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 and you have a, like a you have a selection of international symbols for each country yeah that, that is languageless you know mm-hmm. well that is that is wordless and that is really good that uh, like not everyone needs to know every flag, but most people are going to need to know the flags of the countries of the language. Well, how how do you feel when to choose English? You have to choose the American flag, or you know, a, a Mexican a Mexican person has to choose the Spanish flag, or vice versa, or you know, like because those flags don't represent languages. Well, uh, no, no, because because Brazilian Spanish and Spanish Spanish are different. Well, Brazilian's Portuguese, but Mexican Port- Spanish. So- yeah. Sorry, Argentinian yeah, Spanish. <laughs> they're mutually intelligible. Like they can understand. They are different, of mm. course. Got different vocabulary and, and stuff. But they, yeah, they're, they're mutually intelligible. Um, I mean, they that, are that's, variants I mean, that's of the more... same language. Yeah, but no. I, I do, think... bring, how do you feel when you have to choose the American flag? I think that the website designer is lazy and has only done English for both. That being said, there's not really much of. I don't mind to be honest. I don't care. It's fine. Yeah, I'll t- is take. Not a little consumer. flash of irritation. Well, the fact that it's called English and you're sol- like it would make sense. That's like, when I become a nationalist. That's when I'm like, no, it's English. The default of uh, the default English is called English. It's not called UK English. It's not called British English. It's English. And that's yeah, when I get all. Start, and... Yeah, but then, but then, if they start spelling color without a U, then it is American English. Yeah, English. yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't. I don't think it really matters. Um, but none of that. That's all completely technical. The point with that is just that. A national flag isn't a symbol of a language; it's a symbol of a country. And and even using national flags as as symbol uh, of countries carries this the, the very mild implication that like if you if you're British and you don't speak English, you're not really British. It's not. Really, I'm not saying it's explicitly saying, but in that it's in that direction. Uh, no, I don't. I don't necessarily think so. If the 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 like i can see like okay so for example in the case of well i don't know like it's it, it, this is where like the nuances of language come in because for welsh for example obviously if you want to select the welsh language logo you click on the welsh flag however the mm. vast majority of people in wales still speak english so mm. it's there's no i don't think there's any like no one no one's offended or uh you know like um no one thinks it's necessarily wrong that you select the Welsh flag for the Welsh language. And even in that context, selecting the English flag for the English language is is fine too. Um, so, 
it, I mean, I guess it's not a cut and dry kind of thing, but as long as people understand it, it's understandable. That, that I guess, is the, is, the, is the point I'm trying to come across, is that, like, yeah, it might not necessarily be super... It has, has implications. It has implications. <laughs> it, it, it implies that languages are mapped to countries one-to-one. -one. And it also yeah. implies that languages, you know, a language belongs to one country only. Um, Except which, we should click on you know, American it, it, flag, so... so... <laughs> Well, yeah, no, yeah, but yeah, yeah. That's that's when it's sort of being self-contradictory, right? It's... Well, it's only a function, so it's just like it's. Mm. A, it's. A... I mean, what I'm saying, like, we should have symbols for languages, or uh, even better, just use the words. But then, in which language do you use the words, right? Well, in in, in well, you use the when you're choosing your language. I mean, it's usually this way in video games when you're choosing your language. Um, uh, each language is written in that language's language. Language, so, yeah, yeah. Like Ch Mandarin Chinese will be written in Chinese, and English will be written in English, and then you can always find your own language. Yeah, yeah. That's I mean that's the only way to do literally, it. But... Literally happened today where I mentioned I was playing her uh, Moon 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 Hunters uh, with Danny. <laughs> she she accidentally just pressed some buttons and accidentally switched it to Chinese, and she was like, "How do I? <laughs> how do I switch it back?" Mm. Yeah, do you... but use words. <laughs> <laughs> What you can do in um, uh, HTML is, if you have a paragraph in a different language, you can mm. you can tag that paragraph in that language. Mm. So, so yeah. lang equals da da da. I always I wonder how that that works. I, I'm sure I've used that. Yeah, no, I have used that before because of Welsh translation stuff. It's like you got to, but I I I've never seen that used in a use case, as in, like I think I think we don't notice it as English speakers because um, we. Like most of the web is in American English. Mm. Um, our browsers, if we've got a computer set up right, send English GB as the language that we want. But then, what what the server returns is probably you know any variant of English. But like if you're if you're um yeah if you're a Spanish speaker or something, you probably encounter this a lot. I would imagine. Yeah. Well, I'd be interested to hear. I'm not really sure what that does. Mm. But so. So you you would disagree with the premise of using flags as as national uh, as national identifiers anyway? Um, not that. Also, I just want to say, like, if you're going to use a flag for English, shouldn't it be the English flag rather than the British flag? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> but I then guess, the English I flag has, has become this, um, you know, because of how it's used now. Like the, the English flag, I find the English flag distasteful now, which is a shame. That's just it's, a, become, it's a, become a right wing nationalist symbol. It's that's the association i'm yeah i know what you mean but like it is just but it's also simple. yeah and this really pisses me off i thought because the british flag the, the union jack it's not the union flag it's union jack it's not a jack but it's called the union jack that's his fucking name <laughs> so, <laughs> it's a very ugly flag whereas the i think the saint george's cross is quite an attractive flag so i wish can the racist use the uglier one and we can it's... but yeah, then you're not england know. you're well your, your well, flag is great it's all right. I it sounds a bit silly, but the white at the top is mildly irritating because it doesn't frame itself like a nice. Oh, I see what you mean, like the background or whatever. Yeah, like the Polish flag or something yeah. like that. I'm sorry, uh, though. I interrupt. I keep interrupting you. I'm sorry. What you were saying, actually, um, flags being attached to nations. I think. Okay. Yeah. So, what about as a simpler version? So, do you disagree with that premise as flags being used as identifiers for nations? I mean, that's what they are, but I don't like nations. Like, I, I feel like, I think this is something that, like, the left has always been, ulti you know, ultimately, mm. um, and anti-borders, anti-national, anti uh, you know, pro, pro pan national pro-coming together, and we want to get rid of borders, you know, blah, blah. These are all artificial constructs of politics mm. that we should be at least, you know, aiming towards getting away from. And, you know, mm. the Labour Party recently certainly absolutely turned their backs on that, right? Yeah. And also, cool, by the way, cool. I mean Cool. Yeah, I just want to. I just want to like reiterate for the audience that when we say that we want like, when we distaste like, or when we when we're not necessarily too fond of nations' borders, etc., we're not not saying get rid of all the borders now. Let everyone. Do you know what I mean? Like, no, 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 the, uh, no, no. We have to. The, we have to bring everybody up to the same level, and then yeah, yeah, I, yeah or you yeah. know, yeah. It's a but, and, 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 and I'm not against like. I think it's sad that flags have become attached to you know these political. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, bound, bound regions that mm. contain and exclude. Um, like, if we got rid of borders 
and people wanted to have the English flag to show that show that like this is the land that I'm from. I like this land, you know. I'm I'm, I'm I like the terrain. I like the landscape. I like the people. I like the food, you know. Like whatever, whatever. You, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with liking where you are from, and being yeah. pr- in that sense proud of where you're from. But but that to me that would extend to you know a, a Bangladeshi who arrived as an immigrant today. They're just as English as I am, and they have just as much you know ownership over that as I do. And somebody who doesn't even live here, you know, somebody just likes, you know, like I, I like Byzantium. You know? <laughs> I've got an interest. I feel, I feel some kind of connection to Byzantium. So if I wanted to show that, you know, that's that South flag should be, I think, not not an exclusive, exclusionary, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's, uh, but it, do we, we we do that sometimes, right? Don't we? I mean, I know we're thinking of the worst of it now with with the the, the far right stuff. But when I go down, like, you know, like by the allotments near where I live, like all the old men have all kinds of flags up. It's <laughs> like what kind crazy. of flags? Well, uh, well, my dad had the Venetian flag up, um, but I've seen. <laughs> I've seen, I've seen, I've seen why the Venetian flag? He likes Venice. No other oh, reason. I, just... I, so I like Byzantium. Mm. So I hate Venice. Venice fucked Byzantium over. Oh, yeah, they were the ones who yeah. caused the fall of, of Byzantium. So me and your dad were enemies now. <laughs> Well, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna dig up his dig up his allotment and salt the. <laughs> <laughs> Does Byzantine have a flag? Uh, I think there are. I mean, there were pre that you know, like ancient countries didn't have flags as such, but there were banners and and mm. emblems that were associated with them. So yeah, well, that's where the Welsh game. flag came from. Yeah, uh, the, yeah. The yeah, yeah, yeah. Was the, the Henry the Seventh, uh, the 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 Welsh bastard or something they called him. Yeah, what's the what's their what's their broad family? What's their broad um, for Tudor? What was what was the the name oh. for the? the name it was the they ruled the sort of um, west northwest part of like that. There was that sort of the rose region. Uh... I can't, I can't, I don't, don't, don't worry about it. I can't remember what I'm trying to. All right. Um. But yeah. Uh, so anyway, yeah. The um. So, yeah, so, so I guess, so you, if it, now there's a distinction between state flags and nation flags here as well, right? Because like ships come into this a little bit, I think, right? But um, with, with those, those seal on a blue ba- uh, background, you couldn't, you couldn't select that of a menu of those, right? Like it couldn't be a drop down <laughs> menu. Um, Why not? Because they would all look too similar. You well, that's, I mean, that's his point in the video, right? They are, yeah. they are, they are all recognisable at a glance if you're as used to, you know, because like, um, you know, G- Germany, Belgium, uh, what's it? What's the other? There's a bunch. There's a few that are like re- uh, black, yellow, red, right? In different. Oh, there's Netherlands, Germany, Netherlands, and Belgium, is Netherlands, it? France. Uh, like there are a bunch of flags that have the same colours in different. Oh, and all of course, like you mentioned in the video, all the Scandinavian flags having the. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, all the, the like, so got, well, UK, France, um, yeah, uh, Belgium, yeah. All the, it's the red, the, the red, white, and blue tricolours. Yeah. Netherlands. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so unless you have learned, like which which is which in those cases, that's that's the only way you know at a glance which is which. And he's saying it's the same with the state flags. You know, you know that oh, this one has two human supports, therefore it is Virginia, and this one has you know two deer or whatever. So it's whatever that one is. And I think I think yeah. so, I think that's just because we're not familiar with them. I think that's what that is. Possibly, but like if you scale them down, I mean, I'm talking about a hypothetical case where you know you've got like a language <laughs> yeah, menu yeah. of flags. Yeah. You scale them down to a postage stamp size, and yeah. th- I still think there's they... enough to think like with montana or something no i don't even know if montana like you can do it you can do it with the united you states about flag pins, right you talked about pins mm-hmm. which is in terms of resolution probably about the same as the smallest you're going to use it in okay, the context yeah, with well and i think there's still yeah i think there's still if you're used to looking at them it's like you know the the, the seal on this one is this shape this one's got these supports this one's got a you know a, a scroll underneath it you know I, th- I think you would you would know what those differentiators are even at that size i think I get your point, of course. Yeah, something uh, yeah. that is solid, three colors or whatever, is more. Mm. Um, and I'm I'm only that. saying that on a uh, on a functional point of view, right? Like I'm not yeah. uh, 
throwing in any personal opinions on that. Well, again, again, as he says in the video, should 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 that one particular niche use be the thing that defines the design parameters of the the thing when that's not its main use? You know. Well, this is this is the that's the key question of flags. Which comes back to like, the pretty logo as well, actually. <laughs> yeah, but with 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 flags, right? Like it's it's like, but but what are they? Like, is are flags now just like a a collective national piece of art? Like, like I like I was thinking when he was when when he was doing the video, right? He was showing the flag of I think it was Milwaukee. I uh, love that. I love them. <laughs> and I love and and it's like I used to think Milwaukee flag was a silly flag, but actually, like, I don't know. I'm kind of getting on board with it. Uh, let me just. I love, I love it. It's it's like it's like somebody just threw some clip art together. It's well, but it's, 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 but it's more it's fucking charming. Oh, you've put it in already. Yeah, yeah. Um, and a actually, on that note, when the letters are integrated with the graphics, I don't mind it as much at all. Mm. It's when it's when you got it stamped in fucking Helvetica. That's what. That's what. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what that is. It's yeah. literally Helvetica. Like, yeah. At least, yeah, Milwaukee like is a bit more a part of the overall design. <laughs> It would be so nice if every every state like had you know or every whatever that has a flag like they're they're all um it, a bit more individual a bit more like we made this we're proud of it this is what we like it might not be what you like but this is what we like so we're happy yeah. not all world has to have the same bourgeois modernist mm -hmm. you know ideas of what looks good and what looks bad uh, it, yeah. yeah yeah I mean I. So yeah, like I've that I don't know if it was that video or whether or not it was just like before then, but yeah, like I I think I've definitely come around to the the Milwaukee flag, and it looks to me, although I don't know if that Native American gentleman in the top left is is appropriate nowadays. I don't I don't know what the or yeah anyway, I don't know what the, yeah. is that yeah. But I mean you know you can you can tweak things. I mean they're all on some level problem. even even the ones that you know that he was express, expressing pride of because they fought on the right side in, in, in the Civil War and he was mm. specifically you know they were an anti you know he's seeing them as an anti-slavery thing but they're still military flags is, is militarism mm. something they want to celebrate as, a, as part of our identity you know that that's that's questionable for me. It, it is but like I, I think flags have gone or at least yeah I think particularly with state flags I think they've gone beyond militarism. Maybe mm. it's it's probably close to military history than it is to. In, in, but then, would you make the same? I mean, this is a complete devil's advocate. But like, would you make the same case for the Confederate flag? Well, like, we're we're enough removed from that now that the Confederate flag is just a symbol of Southern pride. You know, pride in in their culture and heritage and blood. Not not pride in you know having fought to maintain slavery. <laughs> I, I think it could have been that way. Yeah. But I yeah, don't I, think yeah, it yeah. is that way because. Yeah. When I was a kid, um, the TV show Dukes of Hazard, right? Mm. Um, uh, so in Dukes of Hazard, they have an orange Dodge Charger, I think it is, and it has mm. the Confederate flag painted on the roof. Yeah. Uh, and or every kid my age at that time had little, you know, toy cars of the, mm. the General Lee, which is, <laughs> he was a Confederate general, that's the name of the car. And it's got the Confederate flag on the top. We just played with them, you know. We we didn't know that this was or would become was and would become a racist symbol. You know, yeah, <laughs> it would yeah, be nice yeah. if, it, if it could have become detached from that. Yeah, I yeah, I would say it became a racist symbol because of how it was used and the messaging behind it and the the context and everything. Yeah, I think we'll be careful with that because obviously when it you know when it was what it was historic, it was a racist symbol at that time because it was a symbol yeah. of the factions that wanted to preserve slavery but then it, it could have it could have been rehabilitated perhaps it, yeah yeah exactly like because there are lots of things that are rehabilitated like um pirates <laughs> and <laughs> i think i think pirates we sort of see as like the less bad guys yeah but like you know you got, these, you got these you got these you got these you know the british Spanish, dutch navies going out doing colonialism and then the pirates doing something else at least <laughs> you know <I> something <laughs> and, and yeah. right you know is uh, you know by all accounts it was it was a much more pleasant experience to be on a on a pirate ship than on you know british navy ship in particular. i'd imagine so yeah yeah but um like and we and also like so like suit jackets they are of a military design but we don't even yeah think yeah. of them as military so i don't i don't even know the thing is i think 
military history and national history are kind of... I think there's a things. distinction between a purely military history and something that was used for, you know, like... like we, 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 I don't think either of us would argue that we should have rehabilitated the Nazi flag for Germany, you know, kept well, that as the flag because you know, mm. it represented a very particular... It's yeah. These things are fraught, I think. And it's like the argument of, you know, do we leave these statues of slavers up and put a plaque on saying this this dude was a slaver. You know, when the when the statue was was erected, we were proud of this, and now we think this is fucking disgusting. You know, yeah. and leave it there as a monument of. I mean, another thing that comes into it is that the, those statues aren't old. They were they were race they were erected as racist in the in the in the nineteenth century. But pretending that wasn't the case, like should you keep them as a monument of you know, like to, you know the German like never forget. <laughs> You know, yeah. like, do we erase that history or do we preserve it? And, you know, well, that's, that's... I, mean, it, it, I mean, statues are a very specific thing mm. because they are fundamentally a tool of celebration. Or, you know, you're, you're putting, you're yeah. putting it, yeah. up, they're on pedestals, you know, they're literally on pedestals. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas, like, so it's, I don't think it's, it's not, I don't see statues as being educational, really. Um, no, I don't. I, especially because of the, the the time and place, time and sentiment under which they were erected. I, I'm I'm not, I'm 100 percent tear the tear the racist statues down. Yeah, but yeah. I see. I do to a point see the argument. Not in well, put not them in, in a the museum case, if it matters. I, you know. I think the, I think the argument in the case of those statues is fraudulent, but in a broader mm. sense, I yeah. Sorry, yeah. what you say? I, I mean, if if the statues are that important, which most of them are just like what Victorian. Slot. Yeah. Then yeah. stick them in a museum or something. It's like that. It's it. Yeah. They don't have to be yeah. there. Do you know what I mean? Like it's yeah. like put something that you're proud of there. Put something nice. You know. It's, yeah, I agree. Yeah. You wouldn't put. You wouldn't put something. You wouldn't. You wouldn't have it. I say you wouldn't have it in your home. You wouldn't have something that evokes the same sentiment at home, really, would you? Mm. But then mm. there is there is definitely the the sort of statute of limitations on it you know there's there's mm. there's a time and a historical distance and and a sort of sense that we've progressed enough because part of the problem with America is it's still fu extremely fucking racist and that's why this stuff mm. all hurts whereas for us I mean you know <laughs> a thousand years ago we were colonized by the Romans mm. and it was a brutal occupation um but you know we still have you know but we we celebrate the the, the remains of the Roman Roman Empire right we are uh, you know in Bath and wherever and this village actually had a Roman fort. Um, and we celebrate them and we're proud of them, but you know they were a, 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 a brutal occupation. Yeah. But the, the, yeah, there definitely comes a point at which you are removed enough from it to be able to just say this is part of our fabric. Yeah, like you can, you know, you have light-hearted comedy shows about life in ancient Roman stuff, don't you? Like <laughs> you're up Pompeii. Yeah. <laughs> so you got yeah, like um. So I don't know. Yeah. So anyway, we've um, this. Uh, this flag video, anyway. Right? Should we? Let, I'll, I'll put the link to the. What's the link? Do you want to put the link? Right, to the it's a really video great video. Um, Sorry, do you want me to find the link? Yeah. Yeah, and I I did watch it on one point five speed because it's a long video. <laughs> it's a long video. I like. And he does videos. he does talk quite slowly in it, but um, but yeah. very well. Yeah. And also he spoke very clearly, which also is, makes a difference. If someone doesn't yeah, speak yeah. clearly, then you got to slow it down. A bit. You also had a bit of like if he was contradicting himself or something there was a, a bit of wit there a bit of like yeah self um what's the word self uh aware uh, yeah 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 no yeah it, it was a very good presentation style and i like that the comments on the video were quite funny as well it's like oh the beef uh this is the youtube jamber i came for <laughs> yeah 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 i think um, the top the top comments on it's something like this is effectively like a two hour long strongly strongly worded letter yeah <laughs> so so if if a, if a flag is a bit of like it uh, like a see this is the thing i see a huge distinction between national flags and state flags i think they are they actually no, seem, yeah, well, well, uh, no. sorry yeah keep they seem to have very 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 different purposes right so you mm. you would fly a flag on a ship so the people would know from what nation that ship comes from yeah which is that some kind of legal thing or a expectation yeah. or a so it's a, it's a legal thing because um certain ships are allowed to go to certain places and, and that kind of thing right and, and yeah. uh, you know different countries have different agreements as to you know like, yeah that, that kind of thing like, so, like i know what i'm talking about something like that <laughs> yeah so 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 to me there seems to be like a much more practical use 
for them in that particular use instance, almost to the point where you'd think that uh, the the maritime sector would have their own system, you know, their own modern. Yeah, but, but, it, but I mean, it's still referring to, you know, a national flag represents a country mm. and a country is a, a political idea that says these mm. people are part of this and everybody else isn't. And we get to decide who, who can come in mm. um, and that. That that's the bit I don't like. And um, yeah. if we got rid of nations, we wouldn't need national flags for ships. Obviously, it wouldn't matter where they came from. Um, but then, yeah, like you say, like uh, uh, state flags in in America, or like county flags over here, or like for me, like the flag yeah. of Mercia, which is a kingdom that hasn't existed for what seven hundred years, uh, yeah. that I still feel some attachment to. And I'm like, fuck you, Wessex, you fucked us over. You know, I feel attachment mm -hmm. to the flag for some reason. Um, but yeah, over here, I think like county flags, they're used, we see them used in, you know, when the council is doing something. You know? yeah. It's like, they're a nicer, they're a more inclusive, like, community-ish, yeah. because they're not, they're not part of that exclusive political, you know. Oh, I think I found uh, quite an interesting flag. I think I found the, uh, oh, the, the cross of Neath, the, the battle flag of Llewellyn Ap Griffith. And I'm sure I've butchered his cool. name. Um, so is is. I think I'm I'm looking up the Welsh local flags. Ah, yeah, this is my favourite Welsh local flag. I'll just put the right because I don't know. Like this is Merionithshire. Merionithshire. <laughs> um, and it's just like. So these these the, that's an example of our county flag, um, and I, I like our county flags. They're kind of fun. Um, well, here's mine. This is Staffordshire Staffordshire county flag. Ah, oh, that's that's quite nice. That's the and Staffordshire knot, not a pretzel. Oh, the Staffordshire knot. Isn't isn't that just a knot, or is it upside down? It's called the Staffordshire knot, uh, and there's like a lot of mythology about what it's what it came from, what it's about, and one of them is it was a knot that was designed so that you could hang three people at once, which definitely isn't true. <laughs> Were they that hard up on rope back then? <laughs> Apparently, yeah. Uh, so, uh, so, so it seems like in the UK, county flags are just a bit of fun, really, aren't they? Just a bit of... We're certainly less... I mean, we're less, I think we're less serious about a national flag. We don't really care about like there's definitely people who do but you know uh in, and our county flags are just yeah it's just something nice to say oh the council's doing something good yeah, cool. yeah. council's I mean, having a little book book celebration of children's fiction or something cool yeah yeah um yeah so i i guess um oh you did you didn't put the video did you put the video in the link in the end the the link I video did, in yeah, the, uh, okay. all those flags yeah yeah. I should probably, probably say like the the who it is and the name of the video that probably people find it better. Mm -hmm. So it's on uh, pre-modernist on uh, YouTube. It's spelled how you'd expect, and it's in defense of state. Flag. Yeah, which yeah, but it is, it is definitely a video worth watching. Um, because it really? definitely it gave me so much to think about. I didn't agree with everything in it, but I, it certainly like, I don't know, made me think about a few things that I'd previously sort of. I think I think the I think the really sort of um, valuable part is because all these snobbish videos about these flags are terrible. They all they all refer to this one book, right? Which I can't remember what it's called, but it's like how to design a good flag or something. Mm -hmm. um, which is just really, and he, he nails it. Like they they really, and this is a modernist thing. They treat simplicity as a virtue without really ever justifying that. Yeah. And that's that's what it all boils down to, I think. And and also the thing what he was saying, like because uh, it says there should be no text on a flag. He uses the Iranian flag as an example, a counterexample of that. Because the Iranian flag, it, it's three colours, and then the the um the sort of the, the design in the middle, which is stylized calligraphic um, uh, rendering of Allah, uh, and then the border between the two between where the colours meet is uh, Allah or Akbar um, over and over again. So, you know, it's got a lot of, um, you know, it's, text is, is, is a big part of that flag, and it's a beautiful flag. That is that is a beautiful flag. It's one of my favourites. Mm. And mm. the amazing thing about this flag, the amazing thing about this flag that it does <laughs> is that it uses red and green without it looking Christmassy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yep. 
I I like the I like the Alu Akbar. Um, yeah, the 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 design in the center. It now to be honest, I would or I don't know if this is a simple flag or not. So you know, obviously simplicity is like hugely uh, subjective, but like if you took away the writing, I would say that's a relatively minimalist flag. Yes, I think yeah, I think the design in the middle that that makes it you know by their standards uh, not minimalist, not not to the extent of because he uses the Portuguese flag as an example. He says it's one of his favourite flags. I'm ambivalent mm-hmm. about the Portuguese flag, but it's it's an attractive flag. Uh, I do yeah, I do think I think modernist and and this is a received thing for a lot of people. But for somebody thinking somebody writing a book about something to do with aesthetics, they should really justify why why minimalism slash simplicity is a virtue in and of itself because it. Mm. It isn't actually. It's just a, pr- a product of a particular way of thinking about design. That certainly, you know, the Victorians would not find what we attract, what we find attractive. They wouldn't find it. They'd find it terrific. Mm. Like it's it's bare. You know, it, it's. What was that flag with the carpet design on? Oh, is that? It was one of the stands, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, uh... Did you just, Was it Tajikistan? Uh, that was because that was a no, not Tajikistan. Uh, it's no. not Kazakhstan, was it? No. Oh, I'll tell you what, though, Kazakhstan's flag is cool. Pardon me? Oh, hell yeah. Shit, how did how did we not know Kazakhstan had such a cool, uh, cool took, flag? Turkmenistan. That's it, Turkmenistan. Oh, Look at that. that's great. Is, how, how did we not know? That looks Kazakhstan. like uh, that looks like it's very Game of Thrones. It's very like mm. all this army coming over there. You know. Yeah, yeah, it is Game of Thrones, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, because you've got that like banner type thing in the middle. Um, Your banner. Shit, that I had no idea. Is that a new flag? Uh, that, I, I I've never. I'm sure. Have I? Have, what is it? Kazakhstan. Adopted for thirty two years ago. Okay, so fairly modern. Well, uh, not. What was the previous flag? Uh, oh, I don't flag. Uh, oh, uh, oh. Mm, yeah, far less attractive. <laughs> yeah, just like a worse, a worse Iranian flag. Yeah. Should I put it in? Uh... So, yeah, go. On. I uh, yeah I don't know I don't recognize that flag the the uh, sorry the new Iranian flag mm. that one I was just like but it's lovely like it's amazing uh so no you were saying sorry was it uh Turk- Turkmen Man. I mean the same thing kind of applies to uh to to Kazakhstan in in, in yeah, that, yeah. that carpet design down the down the mm. left hand side right I'll try and find a good uh, depiction of it. Uh, because this is inter- this is an interesting one because I kind of didn't know what to make of this flag, right? And he makes a really good case for it. So this flag is obviously like even though it's intricate, it's recognizable, and mm. it has. He says, "Is it the five patterns down the side represent the five different tribes that came together for the nation, or something like that?" Mm. Yeah, the five the- major. Tribes, or ethnic groups, so, yeah, yeah. And the, the and moon and stars yeah. is that is that an Islam thing? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and it is it is a little bit offensive to modernist sensibilities, right? It's a bit like you know that's that's not what a flag should look like. But I agree with him that I'd rather I'd rather have uniqueness and individuality. This is where individuality is good, rather than just homogeneity of you yeah. know. I will, however, and I hope this is not uh, problematic. It is slightly Christmassy. I, I was going to, yeah, I was literally going to say that. That, the, yeah, that, but, that could be, this is probably going to be incredibly offensive to members of these ethnic groups, but that could be a Christmas cracker. That could be the pattern on a Christmas cracker. <laughs> I'm sorry to those tribes. Shameful. But it's, I mean, well, it, it I mean, I, I, I like it as a design, though. It's a lovely design. Um, I mean, do you know what? I'm... That's probably that's that is where Christmas cracker designs come from. Actually, it comes from um, carpet 
or at least yeah. fabric weaving things from um, Scandinavia, I think. Like those kind of patterns, they have a Scandinavian weaving origin. Mm. I like I like these weaving patterns. And and when he was talking about the um, Turkmenistan uh, nomadic culture, about how like so so Turkme uh, Turkmenistan tribes back in the day they would express their their art through carpets because they were nomadic mm -hmm. so they, they weren't going to be hanging up paintings everywhere they go mm -hmm. but they mm -hmm. do make everyday use of carpets so yeah their their artistic expression was done through carpets and i think that's just so cool that mm. like that the the yeah how... i thought the first carolina example you did, a good example of the, the i don't like cgp gray he is he's in that category for me of youtubers slash thinkers slash writers who just represent bourgeois good taste back to us and they're very it's very it's very middle of the road very dull um and and because it's that because and because it's kind of unthinking he yeah he he, he criticized the south carolina carolina flag and you know well he, he was saying like you know things should have a historical resonance and then not researching what the historical resonance was of the things he was criticizing which mm. is a stupid old uh, but yeah i don't like that i don't like those sneering snobbish <laughs> middle brow Hey, it's middle brow. I hate middle brow. I like middle low brow. brow. I like high brow. Mid yeah, middle brow. Middle brow. You know. is, it, is that actually an expression? Yeah, oh yeah. Not, not. You know, it's it's one in response to high brow and, and low brow oh, yeah. because about, I think both high brow stuff and low brow stuff are enjoyable. You what, sorry? Six tenths brow. Sorry, six tenths. Six, six tenths. No, I'd say like the the epitome of middle, not the epitome, but a good you know a good popular example, like like Marvel films. Mm. You know, they are distinct. They're not high brow. They're not low brow. They are middle brow. And because because of that, they're very just. They don't do. Any, they don't know do what low brow does well. They don't do what high brow does well. They just end up doing nothing at all. Hmm. It's just aesthetic slop. Uh, okay. It's like it's like AI output. What's low? What would you say is low brow? Just uh, would would you say like cockfighting? Or uh... <laughs> I mean, cockfighting is certainly low brow. But I wouldn't find it. Um. I don't think of an example of something low brow that I enjoy. I mean, um, I mean oh, okay, I, go on. Well, this <laughs> no, or like, no, um, this is amateurish uh, highbrow. Amateurish. <laughs> I would say bro. me the movie twenty twelve or Roland Emmerich movies in general. Like, I've not seen that. They're not trying to be clever. They're very fucking dumb. Or the Fast and the Fury. That's low brow. And it's okay, exciting yeah. and it's funny. It's honest about what it's doing. It's not pretending to be anything more elevated than it is. It is honestly doing what it's doing and it's doing what it does well. I'll take your word for it. I've not I've only seen Tokyo Drift when I was when it came out. And <laughs> I've only actually seen the first Fast and Furious, but uh, I enjoy it. I mean how many there's like seven of them now. A lot. They can't stop. Yeah. Well, once you've bought the cars, I guess you want to get a few goes out of them or something, right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that they're they're, they're, they're low, bro. Um, yeah, but, but they're enjoying. There's an honesty to low brow. There's an honesty, but kind of to high brow. But middle brow is always pretending it's more elevated than it is, while being just as dumb as the low brow stuff. So it's in this it, it, very middle class feeling, very bourgeois feeling, very middle of the road, very unchallenging. Does uh, unchallenging, like, but does it feel like gentrification? Yeah, yeah, I think it's just in the same part. It's, but yeah, it's, it's unchallenging while making you think like think that you're a bit elevated for watching it. Game of Thrones as well is middle brow, I would say. I don't know. I think it contains elements of all sorts. I think fantasy might be... In, I like fantasy, but I think fantasy might just be inherently middle brow. <laughs> well, see the thing in Game of Thrones, right? There are mm. parts of it that are lowbrow, right? Like yeah. you know, a lot of the gratuitous violence, it was obviously there for for shock value for that, and a lot of the sexual violence was there, you know, just to like yeah. for, for, for yeah. shock value and stuff like that. Um, and that I would put under the lower brow stuff. But then you've got the higher brow stuff, which is like the more like philosophical stuff, which but it doesn't really do any of it. It, it, it intimates and it and it and it has the form of that but without ever actually do like what what would you say that uh game of thrones is at any point saying about politics other than you know the usual sort of liberal boomer take of like authoritarianism is bad but sometimes it's okay um so well it's 
so it's it's like you know you've got the white walkers that that are, are representing like the you know like a threat of climate change you've got a lot like you've got like his you've got like a little uh sort of historical buffet of of kind of stuff haven't you like that's what i mean like, by the form it's got it got see it's got things that could be rep could be read as representing particular things but it doesn't say anything about any uh see i'm tempted to to, to I'm, I'm 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 gonna ex like exercise restraint on this because like the the showrunners and the and george R. R. martin kind of for a lot of the show i don't think were working particularly well together so <laughs> yeah I could I could pay, maybe take take some of the points on the books when it's like George's vision, but Dan and Dave are fucking clueless when it comes to that kind of stuff. Which and I think they botched a lot of it. Well, let, but... me, let me let me counterpose it with shows that I think are highbrow. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then the two very obvious ones: Sopranos and Deadwood. Uh, two shows I've watched recently after meaning to for twenty years. Uh, so Sopranos. Is about these awful, horrible fucking people, which is certainly the case in Game of Thrones too. There's some awful people in it, but they're awful people. But you feel affection towards these people, and you're rooting for them at certain times. And that the whole, the whole, the point. I mean, the show is also about um, societal collapse and the collapse mm. of culture and what it feels like to be at the end of um, something like a civilization or whatever. But it also, it's it's these horrible people, and it makes you feel affection for these horrible people. And then you're like, what does it say about me that it makes me feel? affection for these fucking sociopaths who are doing horrific things and then deadwood western show on the surface but it's really about it's the opposite of that it's about um what does it mean to create society what does it a society what does it mean to imbue things with symbolic meaning that we can all come together and agree on that gives us uh society and civilization and how does that affect the people that are building it um what does it do to them how does it change them and you know it's though it's it's about those things and i think that that's what makes it happen. i don't think game of thrones ever in a tiny way sure but like really did was either did or was really trying to do anything like that. uh see yeah well i you know i would say under a, under a more faithful adaptation it would do um because it, it I, does I've read the book. I don't think the books do it either do you not no i think i think they represent things you go know, oh that's a bit like you know such and such mm. war or you know that yeah that's climate change or or this is about how the classes relate to each other, but it's not saying, it's just going, look, that looks a bit like this, doesn't it? And that looks a bit like this, but it's not saying anything about any of that. In the same way that Marvel films aren't saying anything about, you know, where war is bad. You know, you're like, they're not really saying anything. Uh, they're not saying, I don't, yeah, I, I mean, I suppose so. Um, you know, they, they, I think... I'm, I, know, I like they, I'm not saying all middle brow things are shit. I do think they all have that 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 homogen, homogenizing kind of bourgeois kind of thing going on. But I, I enjoy some middle -brow What's things. something that's middle brow that's a bit more indie, like a little less, you know, well-known or mainstream? Less less mainstream, but middle brow. Like, because you're talking, think... we're talking Marvel films, we're talking Game of Thrones. That's all stuff, mm -hmm. like... Is middle brow almost like mainstream? Is is middle brow basically being used as a term for mainstream, or that that type of mainstream? Yeah, but I think it's I think it's a fairly recent phenomenon. The extent to which the middle brow has taken over the main. Yeah, I think I think and and I think this is to do with um, a sort of political development. At, you know, as working class people, hom or, you know, because of Thatcher and stuff, working class people started to see themselves as more middle class people and made that transition. And I think it's the media. It's very much like people being beer connoisseurs. Hmm. They're not. They don't have the the, the sort of the cultural um, comfort or whatever to allow them to be wine connoisseurs because that's not the drink of their class that they came from. They came from a working class history. So mm -hmm. so they take beer, pretend that it's something you can be a connoisseur about, and then feel highbrow while indulging with something lowbrow, which makes it, you know, because of mass middlebrow. <laughs> Because of maths, middle brow, <laughs> and I think it's like I think I think this I think this this middle brow really expanded when yeah working class people started to sort of think of themselves as being middle class, you know, Hang as on a factored unions and why why can you not be a connoisseur about beer, but you can be a connoisseur about wine? That's going to be contentious, right? It's I think you you potentially you can be a connoisseur about anything, but it didn't have a history. lemonade. Why, well, yeah, <laughs> wine has had a history of that because it was a highbrow thing. It was a thing that the posh people drank, and posh people ha had enough time to sit around and compare this wine to that wine. Whereas beer was something you drank to get pissed. Or, well, you know, but earlier than that, was just the safe thing to drink because water wasn't particularly safe. Um, it never had the history of that. So, so that, that 
that highbrow or, or uh, upper class form is imposed on this working class practice that never, doesn't have that history or culture. Yeah. So, uh, so, so, so essentially, it's, it's people who used to be working class becoming middle class and then being ashamed of the work. They can't, en- they can't engage with lowbrow culture anymore because they feel a bit more elevated than that. You know, and that, that people will see that they're oh god, they're actually working class. Mm. Is so we, we 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 sneer we sneer at the lowbrow and, and yeah. pretend we're highbrow while engaging with middlebrow. Yeah. So what 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 <laughs> what would lowbrow be on telly? Would that be like EastEnders? Uh, uh, yeah. East, um, yeah, I think what I think soaps are all inherently lowbrow, but that's depressing. Like uh, carry on films. Okay. Which are great. And I would love to see it's one of the you know, you know how Americans they fucking they love Doctor Who. They and they love these things because they're British and they have this Britishness to them, right? They love Doctor mm-hmm. Who, they love Harry Potter, they love even Game of Thrones, even though it's written by, you know, it's, it's still a Britishness that they're engaging with. Um I want the world to discover carry on now. Because I think they're wonderful. <laughs> they're, they're, a, they're a real expression of Britishness at that time. You know, they they're, they're made in the you know, fifties. 70s so they've yeah. got some problematic aspects but they're they're distinctly british it has been so long since i've seen a carry-on film they used to be on like itv on sundays and stuff oh yeah 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 they were, they're filler filler tv weren't they oh my god you were talking before the show that we should do podcasts on more tv ones maybe we should do them on films do the carry-on films do the carry-on films shit I'd well, love that. how many are there billions Oh my Somewhere. god! <laughs> Maybe, yeah. I don't know. I think it. Yeah, that could be. A film, uh, film 31, analysis. Thirty-one films. Fuck. <laughs> Thirty-one carry on. I, I think there's one or two that were made in like the nineties, which you know, like, and there was the very early ones where they hadn't really, because because that carry on style was something that emerged, right? So the very early ones don't actually feel like carry on. Um, that's insane <laughs> they were so pop this is what i mean like they were in the in the yeah 50 60 70s when the working class was a thing that had a self con uh, had, a, had a class consciousness um they you know they engaged with work you know this was working class culture you know not to say that upper class people wouldn't watch them or anything but you know what i mean yeah so the latest one is carry on columbus at 1992 and the first yeah. one was <laughs> carry on sergeant in 1958 yeah. Hang on, do they still have the same cast? Uh, I think the very early ones and the, obviously the nineties ones had different cast, but like the, the the whole middle, like the middle, probably like twenty had had you know at least ninety percent the same cast. Yeah, and and it, it was these these things were. I think this is interesting as well. Um, this I, I, I've not like done the research to back this up, but I would say in the because um. The Carry On films had gay men um, being overtly gay. Like, they read as gay, right? They might be playing a heterosexual character. Uh, some of them might be heterosexual actors, but they're certainly portraying... A, a, they're, they're intentionally being read as gay. Um, and, and that was accepted. Might have been overlooked, in, you know, certain circumstances. And I think you get that in the highbrow as well. It's okay to be, you know, at that time, okay to be gay. Highbrow, okay to be gay. Lowbrow, but middlebrow. You can't have the gays there because it's all middle class mm. and uncomfortable, you know. Mm. So the was, I mean, the, were, yeah, go the highest the highest rated one is only six point eight on IMDb. <laughs> Carry on, yeah, yeah. Fiber. Uh Oh, that's the highest rated one. Yeah, the one with people in blackface and shit. I think Uh-oh. that's not the best. That is not the best one. It's what it's what IMDb says. Not by a huge amount, but uh, uh what are the next couple? The next couple are well, I noticed that um uh that carry on camping was there. Uh, that's, carry- I mean, that's good. well that's classic because mm. I, I some there's like um I'm gonna look at the trivia one here because it's like it's the first was it like the first time boobs were on TV or something like that? <laughs> um, Might well be, yeah, yeah. It's something in that ballpark that's like the first, like uh, Barbara Windsor was like, yeah, she's like the first person who had boobs on on TV or so, or some some sort of similar yeah. kind of like. 
I do. I remember being in the school playground at age like seven or whatever. Like, did you watch Carry On Camping? I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you see the tits? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, pre-internet <laughs> as a seven-year-old. I'd love to know the like the decision to 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 to, to make that plunge. <laughs> I mean, they did. They became because the, the very early ones are just um, uh, sort of gentle comedies. I would say they're yeah. sort of work. They're what we would call workplace comedies, uh, and then they did sort of lean into that risque. Um, uh, double entendre kind of humor like very hard <laughs> <laughs> the the um the lowest rated one was uh the night is one uh no carry on emmanuel oh yeah i don't think they really count that because emmanuel was a soft porn thing mm. and so towards the end of when, when when all they really had to lean on when people weren't really watching them anymore was just you know they were titillating so they leaned into the soft porn aspect crossed over with oh okay i'll say the was... what's the lowest what's the lowest rated non-emmanuel one and not the 90s uh okay so yeah the 90s one is the is the next lowest carry on england is that one and that's uh from yeah. 1976 at four stars out of ten <laughs> they do. They did get worse. Yeah, it, into the left. Um, got yeah. Do you have a favourite? Oh, carry on, spy. Uh, uh, I think I have a few. I, I really like the the very not not the earliest ones, but the ones where they were just sort of finding their form, and it was a bit gentler with the risque stuff. I, I like so carry on uh, cruising. I think there's one on a ship anyway. Mm -hmm. Um. And then I think the peak ones, the ones that are, are peak carry on, you know, what we what we think of when we think of carry on, I was, yeah, carry on camping, um, carry on screaming, that one's peak. <laughs> I've not watched most of it for a very long time, but I did actually, I rewatched carry on camping a couple of weeks ago. And I, 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 I was just thinking, the, the, the world should know about these. <laughs> <There's something, laughs> they're fun. And they're very I... British. British in a way that I actually enjoy, whereas I hate the Britishness of. To me, like Doctor Who and like Blue Peter and all, you know all that shit. It's it's very Southern feeling. It's very middle class feeling, and it's and it's very Protestant feeling. And and, it's and BBC. as a it's very BBC. Feeling. Yeah, you know, it's, it's it's that. Yeah. yeah, and as a working class Northern you know, Midlands Northern Catholic kid, I just felt, I just felt alienated by that stuff. I uh, yeah, I know what you the, the BBC stuff. It kind of irks me a little bit as well. Like it's that. I don't want to say like it. it like uh, what, the one that hit me with that BBC middle classy stuff the most was I, I went to see in the cinema uh, the film about Richard the Third with well, it was with Alan Partridge, but they put Alan Partridge in as a secondary character just so they'd have a name on the bill. Um, mm. But it was it was the one where they it was it was, it was the recent film about the them digging up uh, the remains of of it was Richard the mm. Third that they dug up in that yeah yeah. Um, and one of the things it was done by Pathé, and they, and it's this a is silly documentary. Thing. No, not a documentary. It's uh, like oh. a dramatization. Well, not a drama. Right. It's, not, it's not hugely dramatic. Oh, okay. Like, of 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 the events surrounding the archaeological yeah, dig. Where yeah. They, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. The discovery. The all that kind. Of, I don't. I don't know if it was necessary. I don't know how accurate it was. But um, it well the thing is the 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 Pathé the the production company they their sound mixing is so grating to me in ways that it doesn't seem to be to anyone else like there are you're gonna say so great you know they were horrible it was horrible like it, it makes things to, so it makes things the thing that i particularly irks me about it is that it makes things that are quiet in real life loud for the purposes of atmosphere so how do you mean you're like an example There'll be like background noises or atmospheric noises, and they'll they'll massively uh, raise the volume. Yeah, on. No, that, yeah, that's a that's a yeah, that's the thing that you came get, out you, of like indie and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the it's the, it's like yeah, the indie rising to BBC kind of. I, 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 yes, yesterday like, we watched um we watched um film called uh, Don't Worry, Darling, mm -hmm. which is really it's really a retelling of the Stepford Wives from the Stepford Wives from the seventies. That's a great mm -hmm. film, by the way, Stepford Wives. Um, but it's got this sense, like sh the, the main character is paranoid and and mm. ten, you know it's it's trying to communicate tension, so it does that thing of elevating background noise and, and breathing and stuff like that, mm. elevating it to serve the purpose of making you feel tense, which I think is what that is for, and I think that's when yeah. it's correctly. Yeah, I, yeah, 
But anyway, yeah. So um, anyway, we've rattled on for a while, haven't we? Uh, consider. Um, <laughs> I've just I've just like clocked the time. Um, is there anything we want to talk? Anything else we want to talk about? Well, finish what um, you said. Sorry, finish what you're saying about the sound mix. And that Rich, that sounds so. That sounds interesting to me. What? Why didn't you like it? Oh, uh, because it was like it was jarring. It was just jar. It, it's like. Was it an over modern presentation, like an overly? Were they trying too hard, basically? Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's yeah. definitely a trying too hardness about it. It's like they're desperately trying to foster a. Mm, I get a you. vibe. I get. You. This is this uh, is culturally elevated, and you should feel culturally elevated for watching it, kind of thing, rather than yeah. just like is what happened. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It just, it just, it's just, it's so, it's, it's quite subtle, and it's just in the sound mixing, and you see it on a few films, a few TV. You see it a lot on TV programs. I think, I think actually, now that you mention it, I think that it might actually kind of be an indie studio kind of thing because you see mm -hmm. it on Welsh television too. So. Mm -hmm. And but, time team distinctly yeah. middle brow. <laughs> Is time team distinctly middle brow? Yeah, because it's like because because you watch it and like you feel clever for watching it, but it's not actually that clever. Well, they're just digging up remains, right? I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. But it's like you know, you've got you got these professors from Oxford telling you, oh, this this was this historical, but they never it's they're not actually doing history. They're just like tell, telling you mm. things. They're not they're not. They're not doing anything clever fundamentally. They, they, you know, it's got, it's got the again, it's got the feeling of being elevated and educational, and you know, the kind of thing that like a middle class family sits down to watch on a Sunday evening kind of thing. But it's not, you're not really learning. It. You're learning, you know, if learning dates and fact is history, then yeah, great. but it's not. What about so? What about watercolor challenge? Is that middle brow? No, I would say that's low brow. Very enjoyably low brow. Low brow. It's very. It's got a very trash feel. What watercolor challenge? No, I know, I know, I know. The subject matter is a bit elevated, but like it, it, it's reality TV. It's it's scheduled when unemployed people and students are watching TV, um, which is when I watched it <laughs> religiously because it was fucking great. But yeah, no, I think it's I got it's got some highbrow um, motifs, <laughs> but I think it's I think it's lowbrow because it's honest. What, ab what about Ready Steady Cook? Low, so low brow, so low, so brow. enjoyably low brow. Yeah, I do like ready. I did. I did like ready steady cook when it was on. Is it still on? I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. It's one of those things that I loved. I loved it back in the day, but I'm not going to watch it now. I, get, I, I have. I had my fill of it. Yeah, but also a lot of that stuff back then was designed for TV, which doesn't necessarily automatically translate on on demand. Which I realised yeah. when I went to binge the Crystal Maze. Which then mm. I realised that actually it's basically the same thing every single fucking week with different yeah. people. Yeah, watch something like that and one episode is enough. Like yeah, you say to. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, reality TV, I guess, in general, or you know, game showy stuff. Yeah. Um. Cool. All right. Yeah. We... Yeah. We'll wrap up. Yeah. Yeah. Let's wrap what up. What the there. fuck was this about? What we're we yeah, gonna call it? Like, <laughs> it's gonna <laughs> it's be mostly it's... flag. It's mostly flags, but Fediverse stuff at the beginning, I guess. So I'll... <laughs> we started with Mozilla and then very quickly went into flags. Oh, wow. Well. We, didn't, we didn't even say anything about Mozilla. Oh, right, yeah. Because um... well, I've, I've moved back to Firefox, and it is very much despite Mozilla, as somebody put it on Feddy, despite Mozilla rather than because of Mozilla. But I've turned off all the AI stuff, obviously. But anyway, we can discuss is, Mozilla. Is, is there actually AI stuff in your Firefox? <laughs> Well, I immediately when I when I installed it, I immediately turned it off, so I've not seen it. But yeah, I think it's it's you can do a summary thing, and uh, and Google's put it in now as well. I thought Google, I know Google have got there, but you know it's in the search results at the top now. So you've got to scroll past the AI slot before you can get to even the shitty results as they are now. Well, I I, I use um oh actually here's one we could is is it a tech topic we can finish on. <laughs> uh, I I have been trying out Mojito. Better. Oh no, oh, hang on a minute. It. No, I've I've been. I, I think I might have covered this in the previous one. Mojito no, we did. Yeah, using, we talked about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but now I've switched back to DuckDuckGo because no. well, Mojik's image search was not not very good at all. Right. Really not not usable at all. Um, its main results like a a fine if you know what you your work you know you you looking for if you've got an idea sometimes like i've googled um like for a recipe or something and it's not too bad because it's got a lot of like indie sites on it so mm -hmm. it's quite good so it's, it kind of sits in a weird place of like 
if I'm looking for something on on that's not on one of the big websites, Mojik's actually yeah. quite good at that kind of thing. Yeah, maybe we're going back to different search engines for different kind of like if I want to know yeah. when an act was born, I'll go to Google. But if I want to yeah. specifically recipe from an indie thing, then yeah, yeah, because I use I mean I, I've I've gone back to DuckDuckGo as my as my usual one because. I don't know. I don't know if it's because like you learn to speak a language with the search engine where it's like you yeah. know the terms or you know how to order them. Because I find DuckDuckGo works re well enough for me. But then yeah. I've, I've spent years learning the DuckDuckGo sort of lingo. and Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's honestly just... as a casual user of DuckDuckGo. I've tried it now and then. The, the, the results are good enough. And as Google results get worse and worse, they're probably going to cross over at some point. Yeah, yeah. But also you don't get the um, AI at the top. Although... Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, because it yeah you say it, it gives you some things like it'll give you a dictionary definition or it'll give you mm -hmm. a Wikipedia thing. That's all you need, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the fact that like I'm I'm going to be interested to see with with all this AI stuff, like what's going to be like the the first big catastrophe that it causes. It's caused a few small catastrophes. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like the the time when they they was it someone tried to write up a legal brief with Chat GPT. Oh and, Jesus. They got in big fucking trouble. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah. So, but like, that's like the biggest AI disaster I've seen so far. Um, but I don't know. I imagine there's going to be one in the pipeline where AI does something unimaginably. Unless, unless like, we all just get used to it. Like, again, idiocracy. Maybe it, we just mm. everybody uses it, and it just we just used to everything. Everything is like twenty percent wrong all the time. But the thing about AI is that it doesn't. Like all of its current uses, but there are obviously with the language model, it's it's not too bad at language, actual language stuff, right? Like you yeah. know, I've asked uh, I've asked ChatGPT to to read over work and point out grammatical errors, yeah. not to change yeah. it, but to like, uh, yeah. So you know, and, and and mark my work and that kind of thing. Uh, it's, it is it is kind of okay for things like summary and stuff like that. It's quite good for like um, menial tasks as well. Like if you've got a big piece of text and you want to be like, okay, I want to switch every comma with a. a uh, every colon with a comma or something like that you know you you, you know so for such so like yeah weird, like yeah. find an automated task like that it, it does it it does pre present an easy uh easy mm. solution but other than those like small use cases mm. like mm. what what can you what what's the real benefit like mm. i know that they're trying to like tout this idea that you may be able to replace workers with them but if someone needs to be responsible for their work then you've got the work but you've got no one or nothing to sign it off as it were like if yeah i think that will work off. because you know a lot a lot of people especially sort of office work a lot of people don't actually do a ton of work mm. um and sort of accuracy that kind of accuracy there's certainly jobs where that kind of accuracy doesn't really matter that much probably so if you could have like you know five people who work 10 percent of the time replaced by an ai and then one person who oversees it and just checks it you know that probably happened but is it worth because it's going to get more expensive because it's mm. using a shit ton of energy like as soon as it's you you know same as everything as soon as it's ubiquitous they'll start actually properly charging for it and yeah. it's probably going to be one of those things like the cloud you know everybody went to the cloud because it's cheaper we can save you you know we can save your organization you know thousands hundreds of thousands or whatever by moving to the cloud and everybody's in the cloud and everybody's captive and they raise the prices and now now everybody's going back to you know, hosting their own, um, or, you know, companies going back to hosting their own servers and stuff. And I can imagine it being a bit like that. Yeah, yeah. Companies might yeah. embrace it and then it goes up and they're like, oh, right, it'd be cheaper to hire people back. And, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of, like, tech, that seems to be tech at the moment. Ca capture something by, well, you know, you know yeah, what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I think at the same time, like, I think it's it, it's a bubble. It's it's already, like, it does seem to be a slowing bubble. down. Uh, and I think it's simply down to the, like, I, I, I think it's just it's finding its place because I don't think it's going to disappear. Um, I've seen uses for it. But is it going to be, given the sort of energy cost and computing cost mm -hmm. and you know, the costs associated with it, is it going to be worth having it for those very small tasks? Like if it can't do the... I was going to say earlier, like it does... I think, you know, at, that kind of AI, that kind of uh, neural network, combat, what they call combative models, something, something like that... Um, it could be very good. Uh, as an example, I heard years ago, like you know, uh, uh, like if the if the government, if if public transport was nationally owned and nationally run, mm. you could use it to optimize routes. It could it could look at 
things in a way that's like far too you know informationally dense for a human to do and it could say like if we tweak if we tweak these buses by these this many minutes and these trains by blah blah everything will just meet up a bit better for like optimizing stuff like when do people actually travel versus when you know those kinds of problems it's probably quite good at that kind of thing yeah but because because those things aren't you know centrally nationally managed or nationally run we don't have those kind of applications to put it so it's put to yeah yeah you know but i've seen i've like, seen like it, it could have been a very useful thing yeah well i've seen i've seen people use it in like health research and stuff like that um yeah and i don't know how i you know like it's well beyond my my knowledge base to know how but apparently like it can i don't know i don't even know if this falls into the language model part of ai or whether or not it's doing something else mm -hmm. um but i have i have I, I i occasionally hear stories about things like oh you know ai has helped you know, yeah, it's very, it's, it's here, very right? good. At, I might not put this in, you know, terms that a computer scientist would be happy with, but yes, adver adversarial neural networks, isn't it? Those are very good at optimizing that have very well defined constraints, um, and like you know, public transport would be a good example of that. But or, or yeah, like refining sort of design things, that, you know, d well, more engineering, I guess, things yeah. things that have very particular constraints and finding finding ways of doing that that a human wouldn't think of. I think for yeah. those kind of things, it does. Yeah, I think it's going to be valuable for that kind of and, thing. And you can self-host as well. Like we can self-host now. There's a thing. I, I it's on one of my previous videos. Jan AI. But you can't. Yeah, but you, you then you're taking a model and applying it to to generate the model. You need super powerful computers that consume a shit ton of energy. But then you can run things through that model on a local. Yeah. yeah well, the model the model has been generated though, isn't it? Well, there yeah, are yeah. models. So. It, um. I mean, it does use. The, well, I think one of the issues with with doing it locally is that it requires quite a lot. Like my my little B link just fires right up when I'm doing anything, um, and it's not as good as Chat GPT um, because obviously the computer is tiny and and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But for, for, but for the kind of tasks that I'd need it for, it's it's, it's fine. But um, I mean, that's why Mozilla, that does seem to be where Mozilla was going. Yeah, having them yeah. having the model be local. But I think that it. I think that the average person, day to day use of it, nah. Like I think, I think the number. Fundamentally, of... this was. I read a post by somebody who was saying they don't want their work summarized. You know, either read my work and experience as it was intended, or don't. Like don't summarize. You know, essentially that was what they were saying. And I agree with that. I find it a bit insulting to me as a you know, as a human being with a soul and intelligence and an imagination to 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 say to me that no, you need you need things summarizing. You don't want to actually experience anything. You just want the fucking bullet points, and that to me, that's insulting to humanity. Mm. A little bit. I mean, it depends. Yeah, but like, I mean, the, uh, with art, I get that. But if you're reading uh, a boring document, that you know, yeah, but as, as we saw, like, I would say the problem's capitalism. The, pro the problem is that that. Somebody has a job to do. Like that's a bad job. Don't give people that job. <laughs> I mean, does 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 the fact that people need to summarize it is that is that really a mistake of the author not making it? Uh, well, yeah, I saw a cartoon. I saw a cartoon. We, this is a bit of a trope, isn't it? On uh, mm. uh, as we we say cartoons in words. But um, <laughs> on on one side was somebody saying. Uh, I sent this email. Uh, I just gave I just gave ChatGPT a bullet point, and it wrote you know it wrote me a long email based on my bullet point and sent it to this other person. And the second frame was this person saying, "I received this long email, and I just got ChatGPT to summarize it as a bullet point." You know, so it's... yeah, that's it. You know, yeah, yeah exactly. Like, yeah, that's that's I'm... yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm getting I'm getting more and more worried that people will start using GPT to basically pad out <laughs> stuff and I, yeah exactly yeah. i worry yeah. that we're gonna if we I, I worry that we're entering a world of padding because one yeah of the, yeah the, the hallmarks of of chat gpt is that it it adds words into a sentence that it thinks make the sentence yeah I, I think a lot of tasks you know you know in university where you're tasked with writing an essay and rather than mm. rather than the teacher going you know the essay is as long as it is if you're writing about this topic, explore this topic fully, and then the essay is however long it is, they'll go, you know, it's got to be 11 pages or whatever. Mm. And I think for some reason that seems to extend into the work world. Like people yeah. will pad their own work because they feel like, oh, I don't feel like I've done a proper job if it was only, you know. And then, yeah, then that's, mm. yeah, like the cartoon. So you've got on one hand people padding and then the other hand is people summarizing. Let's let's maybe get rid of that problem rather than solve it yeah. with AI. Yeah, I... um. 
yeah, and, and you know information availability if, if we need more readily digestible information about certain kinds of things in order to function correctly then make that available rather than you know yeah but of course that's not the world we live in and to translate one to t'other I, well, is, I, is, that, is that in large part because our, you know the world is mediated to us by you know the news media or whatever you know if you want that's where people get, for example, you know, they're, you know, unless they're particularly interested or specialised, like we get a scientific education from the media. It's very bad at that. Mm. Um, I don't really know. I forgot my point. So, so yeah. So again, getting rid of the need for the, you know, the summarisation and and let's do that better. Yeah, I, I did. I did sort of recognise that that impulse in myself in early, quite early on, and and did decide to realise actually, if something's short, I'll make it short. Um, yeah yeah it, because the thing is it's like if you write something long people will read that and maybe remember about 20 percent of it but <laughs> yeah the goal is like just write the 20 percent that people are going to remember yeah you know yeah, like yeah, that's yeah. that's sort of where i go is like yeah you know and and, and graphics and props and all that kind of thing also help but um uh but yeah so i i, I sort of put the kibosh on on padding stuff out very early on because in university, I used to do a fair amount of padding, and oh yeah, um, and 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 it was like, you know, most of my lectures were like, look, if you know, like it, it should be as long as it is, but uh, in reality, I think I don't know if it was a university thing or an expectations thing or something, but it's like it's ten percent either way of the word limit, which I guess doesn't make it a word limit if you can go ten percent either way. But, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Uh, you know, a uh, ten percent uh, either way on the word limit of a thousand words is just like it's a word limit of eleven hundred. Yeah, words. I'd rather, I'd rather again, you know, maybe like hippy dippy or whatever. But like, I'd rather that, like if I so if they say you know no word limit, just write it to the length. And, you know, somebody writes one that's far too long, and somebody writes one that's far too short. Then the tutor has a word with you and say like this, you know, this needed more. Your essay about this should be a bit longer. Your essay should be a bit shorter. That's something that's negotiated rather than, you know. It, I think a, a lot of it it depends on like the expectations of detail, right? Like, if if yeah, if, if like so, one of my uh, assignments long ago was um, talking about the low voter turnout among black people in in the American elections, uh, you know, and, and and sort of the whys and and wherefores of that, and um, I could have just said historic racism, you know, I could have done a paragraph. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I could have done two thousand words on, uh, you know, gerrymandering and voter suppression and yeah, all that kind of stuff. So I guess I guess it's that's really what well, again the that's, that's, that's 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 the job of the tutor to, you know, to set your calibrate you know to calibrate your idea of how much detail is expected. That's yeah. Although to job. be fair, I I think it makes more sense in academia than it does in the real world. In the real world, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, th things are less hypothetical. So. Mm. Um, and and to be honest, in the real world, people don't read that much anyway. So shorter is almost always better. I, mean, I get a lot of emails from you know if I'm doing something uh, procedural, de you know, dealing with somebody where we have to exchange information, and everybody feels the need to pad out emails. You know, I'll get you know, good morning, how are you, how are you doing? I, you know, blah blah blah. And you, you don't read that; you skim that, and then get to the actual bit with the information that you wanted, right? But then you'll do yeah. the same in return. Oh, I hope you're having a good day, and blah blah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 it's it, it. Yeah, so I think I think yeah, ChatGPT could lead us down this road into 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 padding, not not even necessarily text from Chat ChatGPT itself, but it could be it 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 melds into our culture and we just become more more li linguistically meandering. You know, you know how um, Auto Tune was invented, and then it, you know is used to correct you know, singing to make it more how it was supposed and then and then people started enjoying the aesthetic of auto tune. And then you got an aesthetic of things being very heavily auto tuned, like the auto tune became the thing. I wonder whether the, you know, in twenty years time we'll have people writing novels like in trying to emulate the style of Chat GPT. That'd be amazing. Like intentional plot holes and you know <laughs> but but craft not could not exactly what chat you know, a, a, an affectation. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So. Uh, anyway, we were gonna we we're gonna wrap up twenty minutes ago. Yes. Let's, yeah. 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 But, good. Um, good luck. Time. This one. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. Thanks for joining us. Comments as always. They're the ones we want. And we'll see you in the next one. Toodaloo. Bye bye. <laughs>